Millions of people walk through public doors every day. You know how important it is to install strong, durable hardware to keep those entrances and exits fully operational. You also know that safety and accessibility for all persons is not only required by law, it's the right thing to do. In this video, we'll give you specific step-by-step -step instructions for installing the LCN Senior Swing Automatic Operator. The Senior Swing Automatic Operator provides full ADA accessibility with the reliable performance needed for use in high traffic areas. We will focus these instructions on a single door surface mount installation on the push side of a butt hinge door. You may also install this unit on a pair of doors on the pull side, on a double egress opening, on center hung pivoted doors, or as a concealed mount. These instructions are based on the most common installation setup. Your specific installation may vary depending on the door and environment you're working with. For a concealed mount, most of the installation steps match the procedure demonstrated in this video. If you need any assistance with your installation, please consult your instruction manual or call customer service toll-free. We'll start the installation with a site assessment. Prior to ordering your Senior Swing Automatic Operator, and again just before installation, you need to review the location. First, check your power source. This automatic operator requires a 120 volt single phase 60 Hz fused 15 amp 3 wire power source. There should be approximately 12 inches of wire available to connect the operator. UL approved flexible conduit is recommended for the 120 volt power line. You also need to confirm that the power source operates on a dedicated circuit from the main circuit breaker. Running both the operator and fluorescent lighting on the same circuit will cause a malfunction of both devices. Next, check the header clearances. On the side of the door where the swing arm will be installed, you need a 4.5 inch clearance, measuring from the face of the door frame out. Check to verify that no obstacles, like an exit sign, will interfere with the header. At the top of the door, measure up from the bottom of the door frame to a length of six and three quarter inches to make sure you have enough clearance to mount your operator. Finally, and most importantly, check the strength of the frame or wall that will hold the header box. The frame or wall must be able to support the weight of the automatic operator. Remember that double door installations will need enough strength to hold dual operators. LCN makes an aluminum reinforcement plate just for this situation. Order your filler plate from the LCN catalog and it will be custom cut to your size specifications before shipping. The plate attaches to the studs with just a few screws. If there is existing closer hardware in the door, you will need to remove it now. Once you've reviewed the site and confirmed all the requirements, you are ready to proceed. In the next section, you'll verify the parts and tools needed for your installation. Before beginning your installation, check to make sure you have everything you need. As with any work involving electricity and power tools, make sure you have safety glasses and follow recommended safety practices. Here is a checklist of the tools and parts you need to supply. Wire cutters, a file, a measuring tape, a pencil and a marker, a Phillips head screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, a power drill with multiple sized drill bits up to 3 quarters inch, silicon spray, a 1 quarter inch hex wrench, a socket wrench with 7 16 inch and 1 half inch sockets, a center punch, and two sex bolts for hollow metal doors, a hacksaw, and a sturdy ladder. For concealed header and pull arm installations, you might also want to have a rivet nut tool. You can find this tool at specialty hardware locations. Next, Check to make sure you've received the correct product components for your installation. You should receive three boxes when installing a single door. In one box, you will find the header, sometimes called the channel. In a second box, you will find the motor gear box, sometimes called the operator, and the wiring harnesses. In the third box, you will find the control box, arm, mounting brackets, screw packs, and labels. 
In the motor gearbox and control box cartons, you'll find a series of installation instructions. Keep these sets of instructions. You will use each of them during different stages of the installation. Once you've identified your tools and product parts, you are ready to begin the installation. We'll start by installing the header. We will begin with the header installation. First, you'll want to remove the cover plates. Note that this unit is a bottom load unit, so the header covers are on the bottom of the unit. Set the covers and screws aside until you complete the rest of the installation. Next, identify the inactive end of the operator, which is opposite the motor gearbox brackets. The inactive end is the end where the incoming 120 volt conduit will be located. Next, you'll need to drill wire access holes on the inactive end of the header. Depending on where your power source is located, you'll either drill the holes in the top or the back of the header. In your label packet, you will find a template for drilling the wire access holes. Position the template on the header. For our demonstration, we'll be drilling the access holes on the top of the header. You'll be drilling one dedicated hole for the 120 volt power line and at least one other hole for accessory lines. Make sure to drill your holes large enough for the heads of the power lines to fit through. Center punch and drill the holes needed for your application according to the template. Since the holes need to be large, drill a pilot hole with a 3 8 inch bit, then continue with a 3 quarter inch or 7 8 inch bit, or use a unibit. If you determine during your site assessment that the installation wall requires reinforcement, install the aluminum plate now, attaching it with screws to the studs. Install the aluminum reinforcement plate with flathead screws. Depending on your site, use the screws that are appropriate for the location. Next, you'll install the horizontal mounting brackets onto the header. Note that the brackets are handed and need to be positioned to match your specific door opening. The ends where you place the brackets have more than two screws. For best results, mark the screws you need to remove first. On the active end of the header, Remove the existing screws and discard them. You will use the new screws provided to attach the bracket. On the inactive end of the header, attach the bracket using the lock nuts and washers provided on the two center screw holes. Mark the installation position of the header for a push arm installation. You need to leave one inch between the bottom of the header and the top of the door. Then hold the header in place to mark the screw locations. Prepare your bracket holes on the door jamb, then install the header. In this installation, we are using rib nuts for the aluminum styles. For hollow metal installations, rib nuts are not required. To complete this step, feed the 120 volt power conduit into the header. Leave at least 12 inches of wire inside the header for final hookup later. In the next step, you will connect the power. To continue the installation, locate the 115 volt power connections wiring harness, which is in the parts bag. You can identify the harness by the black, white, and green wire. United States safety laws require that this stage of the installation be completed by a certified electrician. Have a certified electrician connect the white wire from the supplied harness to the white wire from the power supply line. Next, connect the black wires from both pieces. Then connect the 120 volt AC power ground wire to the header end plate. Once the power is connected, the electrician can leave the wires in place and you can continue the installation. Next, you will install the motor gearbox, sometimes called the operator. Now we are ready to install the motor gearbox. First, locate the green 1032 hex head ground screw in the motor gearbox screw pack. Next, connect the end of the green motor gearbox ground wire to the rear mounting bracket in the header. Secure the ground wire in place with the hex head screw. 
Before proceeding with this step, use silicone spray on the rubber grommets of the motor gearbox. This should make it easier and smoother to slide the unit into the header. Next, line up the four mounting holes on the motor gearbox with the four mounting studs on the motor gearbox brackets. When installing a middle swing automatic operator, be very careful that the wires on the encoder box do not get pinched between the motor gearbox and the header wall. There is a crescent-shaped slot in the bracket to feed the wires. Position the motor gearbox so you can put the spindle end toward the end cap in first, tilting the unit down and under the protruding corners. Making sure that the six-pin motor gearbox cable hangs down freely, push the motor gearbox firmly into position on the mounting studs in the header. Once the motor gearbox is in position, secure it with the four hex head screws and washers provided in the screw pack. You can install the motor gearbox prior to mounting the header on the wall. However, due to the weight involved, it's not recommended to pre-install it unless there are two people working on the installation. The final step in this section is to connect the other end of the green ground wire to the motor gearbox. In the next segment, you will install the control box. Now we are ready to install the control box and its two mounting brackets. On the face of the control box, attach the mounting bars, but do not tighten the screws fully. Be extremely careful not to put weight on the control box or rub it against a hard surface. As with all electronics, components can be damaged. This control box provides dedicated wiring connection points for easy accessory connection. Plug in the appropriate wiring cables for your application. For this installation, we are using a 4-pin Activate cable. When installing the control box, the beveled edge of the mounting bars will slide into the groove tracks inside the header. Position the control box so the digital keypad faces down and the six-pin connector is closest to the motor gearbox. Rotate the mounting bars to slide into the groove slots until the control box is in place. Then, tighten the screws to secure the unit. Next, gently position the motor gearbox wiring harness over the motor. Be careful not to pull or push on any wires, as that can disconnect the wire from its terminal and result in a malfunction. Connect the six-pin connector plug from the motor gearbox to the control box. Finally, connect the AC power. The red indicator light will come on when the unit is connected properly. In the next section, you will connect the arm and test the door's operation. The most important step in the arm installation is to cut your threaded arm rod to the proper length. Note that the end of the rod with the hole is the end that is reverse threaded. Do not cut this end. It can only be replaced by contacting LCN customer service. In order to determine the correct length for the threaded arm rod, you must first determine the reveal measurement. This is the distance you measure from the face of the door to the face of the frame. This depth varies and you need the specific measurement for your installation. Once you have measured the reveal, locate the installation instruction booklet titled Push Arm and Link Assembly. Inside these instructions, find the page that matches your door type. In our installation, we are installing a butt hinge door. Use the depth of your reveal to determine the length of the rod. Consult your instructions. Before you cut the rod, be sure to screw the lock nut past where you will make the cut. This allows you to back up the lock nut, which will clean up the threads. Cut the threaded rod to the proper length. Remember, do not cut the end of the hole. Set the rod aside as you continue with the next steps. Depending on how your door is hung, measure the appropriate distance from the pivot or hinge point. For this demonstration, on a butt hinge door, that length is 17 inches. Next, you need to measure and mark for the installation of the door bracket. Measure 1 and 7 16 inches from the top of the door to mark the center line of the bracket. Mark the intersection of these lines. Next, locate the door bracket. Center the bracket over these markings and mark the two mounting holes. Center punch the screw locations. Next, drill the holes. Insert the sex bolts. 
The sex bolts included in your installation kit are for aluminum storefront mountings only. If you are working with a different setup, you will need to supply your own 1 quarter inch 20 sex bolts. Next, install the door brackets. Before installing the arm onto the operator spindle, you must get the door to its full 90 degree open position. To do this, locate the activation cable you plugged into P6 or P7 on the control box. Connect the yellow and gray wires so that the spindle rotates. Using a wire nut, keep these wires connected so the door stays in the 90 degree open position until the arm installation is complete. Examine the spindle adapter. If the groove in the adapter is not centered, remove it and reposition it so that the slots are aligned. Do not fully tighten the cap screw. With the door in its 90 degree open position, install the arm onto the operator spindle using the washer and screw to hold the arm in position. Now, retrieve the threaded arm rod you cut to size earlier. Screw the rod into the turnbuckles. Before tightening the arm connections, test the door operation. Do this by first disconnecting the yellow and gray wires so the door will swing to the closed position. Then briefly touch the yellow and gray wires together again. You do not need to hold the wires together for this test. Make sure the door opens to its full 90 degree position and fully closes when activated. If it doesn't, you may need to make some adjustments. This might require that you take additional length off the threaded arm rod. If no further adjustments are needed, secure the arm by tightening all of the arm connections. In the next section, we'll return to the control box and connect the accessories. One of the most common accessories with the Senior Swing Automatic Operator is the actuator button for handicap accessibility. In this demo installation, there is an actuator button located on the exterior of the building. There is also an actuator button between the two exterior doors and another inside the building. The exterior actuator is controlled by a security keypad system. This keypad determines whether the exterior actuator is active or not. For safety purposes, the interior actuator and the actuator between the two exterior doors remains live at all times to ensure that people can always exit the building in case of emergency. For this installation, we are using wireless actuators. First, we'll install the wireless receiver in the ceiling. Anytime you use a wireless receiver, make sure there is no obstacle to prevent signal reception. For example, you should avoid placing the receiver behind a solid concrete wall. Once you have stripped the connectors and conduit from the ends of the two gray wires from the wireless receiver, connect them to the yellow and gray wires on the activate cable. Next, connect the red and black wires from the wireless receiver to the white and black wires on the activate cable. Once someone enters the correct access code on the security keypad, it will send a signal to the relay box. That signal is then relayed to the automatic operator to activate the actuator button. To open the door, someone must then push the actuator button. Once you have installed the components, test to make sure the door operates properly after a security access code is entered. Once installed, you can adjust the timing to allow enough time for someone to move from the security keypad to the actuator button and then through the open doors. In the next section, we'll discuss timing and other actions controlled by the digital keypad so you can customize the setup of your location. The Senior Swing Automatic Operator comes pre-programmed with default settings for door operations. You have the ability to customize these settings simply by pressing a few buttons on the digital keypad. Locate the digital keypad on the control box. To activate power, press and hold any two red push buttons. In the center of the keypad, you will see two display windows. On the left is the setting display. This window shows which function is active. All functions and their setting abbreviations are listed below the display windows. You can change the active function by pressing the up or down red push button located immediately to the left of the list. The right side display window shows the active value for the function identified in the left window. When you want to change a value for a specific function, 
Press the up or down red push buttons located immediately to the right of the function list. So, let's complete the setup for our installation. For the opening speed, make sure the setting display shows OS. We want to set this to the lowest speed. Next, change the setting to back check speed and set it to 1. For back check position, we want to set the value to 70 degrees. For the hold open delay setting, let's select 10 seconds. We'll skip the latch position and leave it in its default setting. The auto rev closing setting should be set to on. The power boost setting is not functional on middle swing automatic operators. The final two items listed are factory settings and will be inactive on your digital keypad. To complete your installation, install the two cover plates. Then adhere the automatic door sign to your door and your installation is complete. In the next section, we'll provide some troubleshooting tips and techniques to help make your installation smooth and easy. If you have trouble with a door not working properly, consider some of these common causes and solutions. Before any troubleshooting activity, first check your settings on the control box to confirm that they are properly set. If the door will not open when activated, there are several solutions you can try. You can also check the circuit breaker and fuse to make sure the circuit breaker isn't tripped and no fuse is blown. You can also check the wiring for loose or bad connections and then reconnect as needed. And you can check to make sure the orange breakaway cable is securely plugged in. If the door does not operate after performing all of these checks, the control box is not functioning and you should contact customer service. Sometimes the door will activate, but it will not open fully. If the door is hard to open or close, check to see what is causing the binding. Adjust the door so it can swing freely. You'll also want to check the wiring for loose or bad connections. You may need to make adjustments to the length of the arm or adjust the spindle adapter by a notch or two for proper alignment. If the door will not size properly, again, check to see what is causing the binding. Adjust the door so it can swing freely. You'll also want to check the wiring for loose or bad connections. Check to make sure you have power to the control box by using a voltage meter. It should read between 110 and 130 volts. In some cases, the door will not completely close. If this happens, first, turn off the power. Push the door open to 90 degrees. If the door does not close, the operator spring is broken and you need to contact customer service. Another option is to disconnect all activation and safety devices from the control box. If the door holds open under power, you need to contact customer service. If you continue to have problems with your installation, you can contact customer service for additional help. You can receive additional help with your installation in several ways. Contact your local security and safety consultant for on-site assistance. Or contact LCN on our toll-free phone line. Or visit our website Contact your local sales office for more information on the Senior Swing and other ADA accessibility products. Meeting all standards for ADA accessibility, the LCN Senior Swing Automatic Operator offers you the right solution for high traffic locations. Once properly installed, this automatic operator delivers the highest levels of performance, reliability, and design options.